Ooh. Let's go. Hey, what is up everyone? Again, my lens is still pretty dirty. Uh, I might have to end up buying a new camera because for some reason the lens itself has a bunch of junk in it. I've been trying to clean it. Uh, it doesn't seem like I can just do it myself. So if you guys see any of that, uh, see all those specks there? It's inside the glass itself. So I think it's time for a new camera. Um, but other than that, as you guys saw, basically I have a daytime running night light that's out weird thing is I just changed that and then also the headlight uh, adaptive headlights malfunction error has been coming up uh, after I changed my headlights itself um, it's been working properly nothing has done nothing was bad or anything it rained still perfectly fine and then one day I took a turn and then boom it just stopped working I don't know why it stopped working um, then I thought it was a server motor or the stepper motor to go up and down because when I would turn it on, my right side of the car would not go up and down. So I said, damn it, you know, that's I gotta buy a new one. I went ahead and bought a new one. Now they're not synced up. I looked up online about syncing it up. Uh, someone said basically you start your car up, put it in neutral with the e-brake on, you adjust the lighting itself, and that's about it. Um, I'm pretty sure that was just a step that, the, that what I was told to do. I did it and it still didn't work. Um, and then afterwards it stopped going up and down and I was like, what the hell is going wrong, going on with this? Um, and even then it's still going off. And then afterwards I thought maybe it was the uh, LEDs that, uh, cause I checked in there, my angel eyes or the daytime running lights are LEDs. I thought maybe one of the resistors that are in it cause it has two of them and the cable's pretty long. I thought that maybe that one of those got stuck inside and was preventing it from moving left and right. I took it out and I put on uh, regular halogen ones, nothing. So eventually I went ahead and decided to go to a shop and either have this removed, and I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna erase the function itself because everything else is working fine, um, but I might have them kind of see what's wrong with that daytime running light as well but I kind of just want to just get this over with because I'm kind of tired of seeing that air malfunction staying on there. So where we left off from the last video was basically we did the brakes uh, and rotors. So we got some DTC 30s in the front, some Hogpad uh, HPS 5.0s in the back, uh, R1 concept rotors. Those are actually pretty good. The only thing I didn't know about was, I think in my last video, the shims that I just said that they potentially had them in the past they just don't seem to be on there anymore um somewhere along the lines i've actually read online where this car doesn't come with shims in the fronts only in the backs which is kind of awkward for me to realize that right now but uh i might go ahead and order some they're slightly a bit expensive uh but from what i was reading on is you go ahead and buy these titanium shims they tend to uh, exchange the heat transfer so when the Something about the rotors being too thin. Um, basically, when the heat transfers, it transfers into the piston uh, caliper and the braking fluid, which eventually ends up to evaporating your brake fluid as well as uh, cracking your piston, your caliper pistons. So, basically, you want those titanium shims for, I guess, it's to lessen the damage and for that to seek. Uh, for the heat to seek up in there. Okay, so that's one of them. But I think you guys saw that the little plating that was on the last car, I actually took those off and put them on there to act as a shim right now. So I went ahead, swapped those on there, put them on, as well as I added that, um, that high temperature grease to be able to also take in some of the heat, which I'm hoping that should be enough for the first track day as I am running low on funds in terms of for that track i had a budget for it and i'm very well over it now and i have other important things as well to purchase um so yeah uh, and what has that entitled to uh purchasing 
you may ask yourself, well, basically, for the track, we're, we're preparing ourselves. This trip right now is just for me, for my sanity to take that light off. But uh, the track day, not only are we doing brakes, uh, we're doing new oil as well. We went with Ham's Oil 5W40 because this engine seems to burn a little bit of oil. But I'm assuming that the engine doesn't really burn oil on its own. It was because the dealership that I got it from must have not added the correct oil. And at the same time, the oil was actually low when I got it. So I don't know what happened there, but when it burned it afterwards, I added two quarts. It burned through that after about a, uh, a thousand, 1500 miles um, and now it needs right now I filled it up again uh, a couple weeks ago and we put like at least 500 miles on it now um, so I'm assuming we're good to go on that end lastly this car I did get it with 68,000 miles we're at 73,433 miles so I have driven this car a lot uh, in the sense of just a month and a half two months now uh, I think it's been two months now um, no, I'm sorry. It's been a month and a half now. Um, so, the other last thing we need to do is the dual clutch transmission uh, oil. Uh, we're going to change those fluids out as well. That is something that I need to do. So, an oil change and the trans fluid change as well because, again, as it is an automatic, BMW says it's good for 100,000 miles. Honestly, I have read a lot and people saying no don't do that because you know it just leaves room for error I really like driving in this car it's just so smooth it's nice you can go fast when you want to sometimes we just sit here and chill but yeah also I got another 91 and a banner on this guy actually I even added a red button I had someone who gave me that. I got a tow hook for this car, but the actual OEM ones because I it was readily available by a friend, by a broken BMW who gave me that. Um, and then of course, my air freshener accents. Those are nice too. Those are gold. What is it? Uh, rose gold. So we are on the highway, right? It is 70 miles an hour legally, I guess you can say. That guy back there is catching up. I'm barely able to catch up to this guy. And we're going about 90. No, wait, no, here he comes. Fuck it, I'm moving out of the way. I want to get this guy in. That way you guys can see the madman. See that lifted ass truck? I'm telling you, man. I drive slow in California. And everyone thinks I drive fast. Not to forget the Explorer that's right behind him following him. almost to the location the only issue about this is that he told me to show up at any time I did tell him I was gonna show up today but I messaged him on Instagram and I asked him like hey are you guys working today because I, I did kind of forget that today is President's Day um, and basically that's a holiday for some companies like mine uh, but I didn't know if he was gonna be working today he said he wasn't going to so he said top my by tomorrow so hopefully he does remember I don't want to show up and be like, oh, hey, uh, guess who's here? But yeah. Also, not to be rude, but the Camry that kept like trying to one-up me this whole time, you're a dick. Because uh, he like kept trying to cut me off, and I was like, dude, like chill the f*** out. Sheesh. Okay, I'm here. I believe it's here. No, the next one over. Uh, I don't think it's here. Oof. Starting off strong with a bunch of American muscles. American muscles. This shop should be somewhere around here. MS Auto Gears. We're looking for performance dynamic. Should be a bunch of beamers. Oh, look. 
I see a bunch of European cars. Oh, perfect. His is right there, so we'll get that done. Okay, so yeah, I know I kind of just didn't show you guys anything, but the whole process was through a tablet. Um, he had, you know, you guys can go visit him. He's actually pretty knowledgeable what he's talking about. Um, we were actually discussing about the whole N55 motor and things to watch out for and, you know, making sure this car was actually pretty good. But overall, it just took like five minutes just to decode it. Um, I don't know what pro uh, software he used. I didn't want to ask him because, uh, you know, it's his business. I doubt he would have told me. But it's something that you guys can do. It was $50 uh, to decode it. Uh, usually, I'm, I guess I'm assuming the base range for that would be anywhere between like 40 to $60 just to do that. Uh, and the only reason why I'd say it that way is because that's what I've seen so far based on anybody else who has done it. Some people get it for 60 some people do it for $50. Um, again, totally up to you guys on what you guys are trying to do. Also, that daytime running light, I don't know what happened, but that one light was just off. So now this guy is error free in terms of lighting because that's all the issue was. One last thing that we said about this car is that I do have a dying uh, sensor for the TPMS. So the tire pressure monitoring sensor. One of those are bad. Um, so whenever I do uh, any tire exchanges, I should be done with it uh, and basically swapping those out, which I'm not going to be happy about because that is like $100 each sensor. We're going back to Castro Valley. You guys remember when I had the E46, I did the, uh, I dropped it off to get the, uh, what was it, the flush, the trans flush. So basically we're doing the full service kit for this guy as well, we're doing for the DCT. Um, again, I don't know the history of this car, so best thing to do when you first get a car is always swap fluids. Um, so Saturday of this weekend, I'm supposed to be doing the uh, AMS oil for this guy. So usually, when I stop around here, I get it, but I completely forgot this time. So I had to make a whole on U-turn. I wish these guys knew how to drive better. Let's go, you guys. Um, but basically, his shop is in a place where if you don't react quickly enough, you'll miss it. And that's exactly what I did. So that little shop, you guys can't see it but right in there right here in there that's where it's at so you see it right there it is and in this case i completely missed it and when you miss things you end up getting all these cars just coming straight at you so now i have to wait for that so you guys remember this shop here they're always here this guy's here couple still same cars here I've been left this is always interesting they use this one for drifting a couple times I believe it he said so noise Oof. but she looked good except I don't know what this is because I kept cleaning it up I cleaned it up yesterday I don't think the camera can pick it up but it's like drippiness there and I don't know what that is I cleaned it up yesterday it went away um, it was on this side too it's not no longer there. Hard to keep a car clean. Being the weekend that it is, uh, actually no, it was a holiday. Sorry, yes, it's a holiday. It was Monday, um, but my the mechanic that I took it to, uh, his name is Christian at Fab Systems in Castro Valley. Uh, he had an appointment, a doctor's appointment, but um, we scheduled my stuff at 3 um, and he was waiting for parts. Basically what happened was he started. we started the job at around 5 o'clock and eventually ended up getting done with everything at like, let's say 8 o'clock. I think actually I think it was already done by like 7.30, but the time that I got there was 7.30. So it, all, it was already done, so it took him about 2 hours and a half. Uh, but overall, the car is good. It shifts pretty nicely. Um, you know, it's been pretty damn good. No errors after the coating as well. Pretty stoked on all of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say to you guys. I mean, this car is pretty much almost there. We're waiting on an oil change to be coming up soon. 
I pray for that to be the weekend, but I'm not sure yet. I just got the shipping uh, message, so I don't think so that it'll be coming in this week. But prayers are out there for it. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's little vlog. I know I've been lagging on my last two videos, or this one and the, it would be the past one and this one that I have not been really filming on the shop side, and I need to do a good habit of it. Just, you guys gotta remind me about it too, and tell me to be brave, because honestly, that's the only thing that's killing me, is that I gotta be a little bit brave to be able to ask someone if it's okay to film. But, other than that, hope to see you guys on the next one. Bye.